Mechanization in farming has a number of benefits in both the quality and the quantity in agricultural production. Today our focus is going to be on forage production. But the first question is, what is forage and how does mechanization come into play? This is Youth in Agriculture and my name is Susan Mwangi. When we arrived here, we couldn't begin filming until an hour later because one of the very key machines in the, uh, the process of forage production had failed. And I'm with Sam here who is the farm operation manager and will be telling us how it looks like whenever there is a breakdown of a machine. Thank you. Uh, this is Isabella. Uh, as you have said, uh, when you came in, uh, we had a, a breakdown. And um, in uh, the case of uh, uh, forage uh, production, timing is very key and that uh, makes us uh, in in the case of any uh, uh, breakdown we have to fix it very fast and uh, if we can fix if uh, it's a major problem you find that uh, we have to switch to another implement we've got redundancy and in that case we've an, we've got another machine a spare machine and we switch immediately because if we don't switch immediately or we don't fix immediately you find that uh, the quality of our forage is, uh, is poor this is the bailer and uh, we use it for baling the forage. Maybe how efficient is it? How much production are you able to do within an hour? Uh, our baler uh, can do, uh, uh, one bale can go up to 800 kilos and uh, in an hour we can do up to around uh, 70 bales. As a farm operation manager, uh, I oversee the running of the machinery and in, uh, in the forage uh, production, you find that uh, we've got uh, many machinery. We've got the, the bela, as you've seen. We've got uh, the mower. We have the, um, the forage wrapper. And also we've got the, the rake. So those machinery, uh, I oversee them to make sure that uh, there is efficiency in uh, forage production. In a month, we find that, you find that uh, we can have uh, some bits here and there of uh, breakdown, but we make sure that uh, we are very careful in uh, uh, managing the machinery. And in case of any, any, any breakdown, we've got uh, our mechanics here, we've got the spare parts, and as I said, we've got a uh, spare machine. How often do you encounter such incidents where machines are breaking down? So in a season, uh, we might encounter two or three uh, problems, uh -huh. but we fix them. And that is a, a season is how long? A season uh, is like uh, three months. Three months? Yeah. All right, okay, so the Bella machine is finally up to the task, and we will now be heading out to the farm to see exactly what it should be doing. We're finally here to see the different stages of forage production, but before that, this farm is 1,101 hectares of land uh, under which they practice what we call conservation agriculture, and that is a climate smart uh, approach. David Naftali, who is a farm manager, will be telling us more about that. David, how yeah. are you? Yeah, good, thanks, Susan. Bari di mingi ama nini? So tell us more about yourself. Uh, David Naftali. Um, Farm Manager House Quest, uh, where we've been practicing conservation agriculture for the last uh, 11 years now. Yeah. When you talk about conservation agriculture, yeah. exactly what does it mean? Uh, conservation agriculture is a, a system of farming a practice that uh, actually is a climate smart method of farming. We call it climate smart because it helps us preserve as much moisture as we can and increase our yields and profitability. So we've been here before where we focused on beans production. Today we are focusing on forage production. Tell us, is it a system you use uh, of maybe ro crop rotation or what? which is your main crop? Uh, one of the principles of uh, conservation agriculture is uh, crop rotation. And that's why last time we were growing beans and even now we have uh, beans because uh, as you've said we have uh, 1101 hectares and it's not all the land that is on either beans or forage there's part of the land that is on beans and part of it is on forage so what will happen next time where we have forage we'll be having beans and so that's a uh, crop rotation and uh, the type of forage you are growing here is uh, sorghum which is a grass and beans uh, legumes so our crop rotation is between beans and legumes. Today our focus is on forage production. 
tell us what is forage? Uh, forage basically is animal feed and um, any fodder is forage. So whatever we do here is uh, growing sorghum and preserving it as silage. Uh, the reason we make silage is because it can go for as long as two to three years. As long as you keep it airtight, you can preserve it airtight uh, so that it's readily available for the farmer who needs it maybe one or two, one month, two months or even one year ahead. So it's just a form of uh, fodder preservation. I target customers, um, uh, a farmer who owns uh, one cow, that's a dairy cow or even beef cow. So we sell our silage to small scale farmers and large scale farmers. We also sell it to uh, feed lotters, those uh, people who do fattening, because our silage is actually high in protein. So the protein helps in fattening and also increasing production of milk. Okay, as we move forward, you will educate us more on the nutritional value uh, sure. that we get from the forage, the kind of forage you planted. Yeah. But as of now, mm -hmm. what are we expecting to see? We are not going to show you the planting part because we've already planted and it's already up. But uh, what we are going to show you today is um, the process from cutting. We have uh, raking, baling, and then uh, wrapping, which is uh, going to make it airtight. Uh, so from uh, cutting, we let our um, forage wheel for some time. Because uh, as you can see, this forage was cut like uh, three days ago. And we let it wheel because these stalks were, were tough and they, were, they had so much water. And we don't want to sell our customers water because they already have it as there. So we cut this three days ago and we let it wheel. At times we can let it wheel for uh, 12 hours. 24, 48 or 72, depending on the amount of uh, moisture you have in these stems. So as you can see, this is already dry and there is a reason why we let it uh, wilt in the field and uh, we lose a, as much water as we can so that we can increase the concentration of sugar in these stems. Uh, when you test this stem, is a bit sugary and that's why we don't even add molasses to our um, silage. When you add molasses, you increase the risk of adding maybe aflatoxins to your forage, but you want to sell it as natural as possible. Uh, so when you let it wilt, one of the reasons is to increase the concentration of sugar in these stems. And secondly, we don't want to sell our customers water because they already have their water. So uh, our forage uh, is um, about a 30% dry matter, which is ideal for our farmers. So when we let our silage wilt, we then come and rake it. That is putting it in a straight row. This is a windrow. And after windrowing or raking into one windrow, we have uh, a bella, which will pick and make a, a round bell, which is about a 650 kilos, which we then wrap and let it ensile for about uh, four to six weeks. Then it's ready to be consumed by uh, customers' cows. An important factor, something you've mentioned about the sugar levels, uh, which makes you not use add molasses. Something I, I think I watched in one of the videos we've done before about photosynthesis, that a farmer being able to identify the time when the stem will have the sugar content. How are you able to determine the time that the sugar now is uh, at the stem? Yeah, mostly the sugars will, uh, will go in the stems and uh, to the leaves at around uh, from 9 a.m. when the sun is up because the photosynthesis is already in the process. So the plant will always be using that sugar to make its own food and you want to cut it when the sugars are at uh, its best in the plant. So previously we've uh, tested our nutritional value at different times like when you cut at 6, cut at 8, maybe uh, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. and we found the best time to be cutting is between um, uh, 10 p.m up to around 4 to 5 p.m. as long as the sun is up because uh, the plant is uh, photosynthesizing. So at that time, your sugar levels will be uh, high or at optimum to make your silage. You said uh, this one is now collecting, will not be yeah, collecting the bella. Bella. Uh, The machine behind us is a uh, bella, so it's going to be picking the forage and making a a very nice round bell and uh, a, be a bell is going to be 600 to 650 kilos and there is a reason for that. When it gets to a customer, we believe um, 
uh, from our different trials, we found a cow will take between 17 and 24 kgs of our forage per day. So we make it simple for our farmers to know how, ma how many bales they need, uh, maybe for a period of a month. Because now you'll calculate like it will be a bell per cow per month. Because if a cow takes 20 kilos, which is the average, that means 20 times 30, 600 kilos. So it's a bell per cow per month.